the Zohar says on our on parasha, says Rabbi Chizkia patach ve'amar Rabbi Chizkia opened up and said, "Minatal le'meshisa Yaakov v'Israel abuzizim." Who allowed Yaakov, this entity that we call Yaakov, to be ripped apart and to and Israel to be looted? Come and see. From the time the Beit Hamikdash has been destroyed, and brachot shorot ba'olam v'neisur, the blessing to this world had stopped. They don't come anymore. And in other words, so you tell me what? We, we do have a bracha. We, you have no idea about the abundance of what bracha is all about. Right now, we, are, we, are, we have like a drip of, of things or maybe a, a leftover from generations, you know, a, you know, back to us. I mean, look, for example, at the United States. Look at the, uh, at the great generation of World War II where they saw it within themselves to really go and fight for the, for the world. And hundreds of thousands of people uh, had died. I mean, the, the casualties are enormous of, of just American casualties in World War II. And Americans went to fight in, I mean, Normandy. If you watch movies like, what's the name of the famous movie? Private uh, Ryan, whatever it is, or the uh, Band of Brothers. Or what these people, I mean, you have no idea what, what they had to go through. Just on the, on the first invasion of Normandy, it's like 10,000 people die on that day. It's, it's an unbelievable number. And because of this willingness, internal willingness to go to do the right thing and to fight, America today is resting on the, on the crown of glory of these people of that generation of the, of the 50s, of World War II generation. Everything that we have today, today as you can see, we are going backwards. Where industry is, is not present in the United States, it's other places. And the, and, the, and the blessing of this country, if we don't know how to preserve it, will simply vanish. Not for nothing, they are called the great generation. They were they are unbelievable people. So are we. What we, that's one of the explanations of decline of the generation. What we experience today is just a... a, a the, the projectile of what happened back then. It's the, the leftover. It's like, you know, the, the last blast of that. If we are not going to know how to maintain it and to bring it back, eventually you're going to lose velocity and you're going to fall. It's the way it is. And not for nothing, the Zohar says, from the time a Beta Mikdash has been destroyed, the Brachot had stopped. Because we fail to understand what was this all about. We can, we can regain it. Not necessarily by building the building. Because I can go and, you know, and, and, and destroy the mosque and build the building and it won't be it. Before we go and we take material to our hand and actually build physical building, we need to understand what needs to be done to fix ourselves and to build ourselves internally. And what were the reasons for for, for the exile? What was the reasons for the destruction? Why did we get to this situation? And, and that's one of the, the dilemmas that people have in terms of a Jew. Uh, and that's the whole conflict that at the time was between the Zionists and the non-Zionists. You know, let's go in and, and, and retake our land. But therefore, what's the point of retaking the land if you're not going to live as a Jew? I mean, you are repeating the same mistake that your ancestors, that you are not going to flourish with the bracha, and yet, and yet, when Am Israel is in Eretz Israel, and to a certain number of the people, uh, they do what need to be done. You see the bracha that Eretz Israel has in the region where everybody is like uh, basically, you know, living the life of uh, of the Middle Ages. Regardless of how much oil they have. Israel is, a, is an ISO for these people because of its great success, but you don't understand. The success is for something. And you are living on a drawer. In other words, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is paying you based on what eventually is going around. You need to gain it all the time. And, and the building needs to be built, each one of us, 
because we say each one of us is a Mishkan. Each and every one of us is a temple by himself. Basuli Mishkan, Veshachanti Betocham, inside of them. So before you're going to build buildings, you need to make sure that, that Akadosh Baruch Hu dwells inside of you. You're going to make yourself, in other words, you need to make yourself appropriate for that. And are you making yourself appropriate? Before you're going to tell me you want Mashiach now. I read something that, you know, from Rabbi Adin Steinzel, it's about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, in a way that, you know, everybody says the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Mashiach, 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 and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, he died like anybody else. But what he wrote it was, was fascinating. And I said, oh, that's a, that's a nice way, you see, I'm not, I'm not a Lubavitch person, you know. Uh, however, when he said he tried to do whatever he wanted to do to create a certain spirit, a new spirit in Am Israel that would encourage people to do things, to care, to, to, to be involved in, in, in giving or loving for nothing, you know, for no, for no internal your, um, motives, to forgive for themselves, and so on and so forth. By doing so, creating a new momentum, a new, a new uh, defibrillator to, to this dying heart to get it going, and maybe this in return will change, will create a notion of giving and understanding and acceptance and so on and so forth that would Am Israel will get so-called quote unquote infected by and in a way would project around the people around them. Unfortunately it didn't happen and today you know I guess his vision took a different turn but that's for a different topic for a different time. However that's, a, that's, a, that's an idea there is a valid idea in terms of what needs to be done and, and, and why did they do the things they do. I don't think they quite understand why they do it. But anyway, it's a great and noble idea. We don't have that spirit. That redemption in which we are looking for is not going to come once we are completely involved and immersed in, in what we do today. And the way we live our lives today is completely against what you, we should be doing. And that's a point, that we, again, we said it yesterday, but I don't think uh, it really saturated well inside of you. That urgency of Moshe Rabbeinu to do the Nekama, Milchebet Midian, now. Because then he's going to do it, and then he's going to die. One last mission is going to die. It is something that you need to remember all the time. That clarity of the mind to understand that what never needs to be done needs to be done now, and I, that knowledge and not the confusion of maybe I'll do this or maybe I'll do that and maybe I'll do this and maybe I'll do that. That needs to be done. That's what I'm doing it now. That's what in front of me. In other, in other words, to understand the importance of the now. I'm not saying live the now and forget about the future. Don't, you know, everything that we do is for better. You know, we do things for our children and so on and so forth. However, when you do things for your children, do not neglect yourself. Don't be a martyr because many people so-called do everything for the kids and everything for the kids without replenishing themselves. And that's, in a way, everybody says, oh, what a, what a martyr this person is. What a tzaddik, what a tzaddik, and so on and so forth. They don't really do it for the kids. They want to do it for the title that they're such great parents. However, if you're a great parent, you need to be able to also generate stuff into yourself so you'll be able to give. When you take care of yourself, not in a selfish way, when you take care of yourself in order to be able to give, that's a totally different way of looking at things. I'm going on vacation, so I'll be able to come here and teach again more because I'm going to completely burn out to the point in which I will never be able to, to, to give again. So I need to go on vacation to charge my batteries. So this is not a selfish vacation of like I'm trying to run away. I'm trying to, to give. I want to give. And parents need to have time on their own as well. Without their children. The children don't need to tag along all the time with the parents. Uh, I'm not saying go to uh, Dominican Republic for like a week and leave your kids alone and go on a cruise and so on and so forth. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about even those little moments in the day when the, kid, the parents need to be alone. And it's not when they go to sleep when drool is coming down on the pillow. I'm talking about... You know, a half an hour when they can have to sit down on, you know, on the porch or sit down somewhere, you know, away from the kids. The kids go, do your own. I'm talking to mommy right now. We're just having, you know, just to have that, to replenish. And people don't have that because they're busy living to titles.
and not knowing what needs to be done now. I'm, I'm, I'm saving for the future, I'm living in the future, and I'm neglecting my present time right now. But how are you going to have a future if you don't have a present? The, right now. I'm always worried about the contemplating, I'm neglecting the now. That's why I never reach anywhere in life. I never accomplish anything in life because I keep neglecting the now. Right now. Let's say, for example, well, you know, Next week, I'm going to start getting up on time. Are you really going to get up on time? No, right now you need to get up on time. Right now, even though you're tired, that's what needs to be done. That's what you do. Moshe Rabbeinu has that. And right now, we need to work on ourselves spiritually. The whole world can wait in terms of that. Because that's what gets us going. The spiritual strength of us as individuals is the best shield against Attack. I'll give you an example. Let me take a sip for my coffee again. Hold on. Before it gets cold. Black and sweet and strong. That's the way I like my coffee. It's a little weak. No, it's okay. You didn't make it. Anyway. Let's say Israel right now is in Gaza. So right now they have tanks going there. You said a tank is a pretty strong... If you haven't seen those tanks... Uh, when you go to Israel, go to the, uh, to the uh, tank museum on the way to Yerushalayim just to understand the sheer magnitude of this monster. The Merkava Mark IV is a, <laughs> it's, it's a monster. I mean, it looks nice on videos and so on, but when you actually go and see this thing in front of you, it's like, oh my goodness. And yet... It's very vulnerable to most advanced anti-tank missiles like the Russian supply that they have in Gaza right now. So my father told me that they developed some kind of like a shield around it. And they showed the, they showed the guy shooting the, 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 the missile, the coordinate missile, to the tank. All of a sudden, it goes like this. What happens? That shield is a very interesting thing. They have it on boats, on, 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 mili on army boats. However, now they have it on tanks. And that shield is an invisible shield. It's electromagnetic. Your strength, your muscles, is the tank that is very vulnerable to a little missile that will come in or to, to a hollow uh, a rocket that will come in and will explode the pieces of the tank inside to smithereens. Because you, you have to know how it works. Sometimes those missiles, if they're going to attack you or explode or impact, the, the armor is so thick, nothing will happen. However, if it goes in, penetrate, and upon penetration, there is another explosion. It's a hollow, it's a hollow device that goes in, and therefore it goes in, penetrate, there's another explosion, and then it explodes inside the tank. It will blow everybody inside. Take that and explain it to yourself. We are very strong externally. However, using the right anti-tank, anti-person, missile, will come in and it doesn't attack you on your muscles, it takes you inside. You need to create this invisible shield, this electromagnetic shield around you. That is your spirituality, because regardless of how strong you are, that's what it is. Right now, we don't need to worry about anything else, about our muscles, about this, about that. Because the bracha will come not because we went to the best school or we scored the best score and so on and so forth. The bracha will come based on how much are we in touch with the here and the now, with me now. With how am I connecting to myself now. Because if right now I'm not connected to myself, I'm not connected to the spiritual part in me, to this divine part in me, right now I'm failing. And if I'm failing now, I cannot have a tomorrow. Because what would make me go, go, go tomorrow and succeed if right now I'm failing? You are, you are short on your, on your tank. There's not enough gas in your tank. I'll get to the racetrack. Oh, um, so let me tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll rip everybody there into pieces. I'll drive so fast. I can, but yes, how are you going to get to the racetrack? You have no gas right now. You're stuck in the middle of the highway. 
That's what we're doing. The bracha, what we're referring to, does not refer to abundance of like what we call, you know, okay, so you're going to have a penthouse in Manhattan, right of Park Avenue in the 56th floor, you know, overlooking whatever, and a jacuzzi inside, and a swimming pool inside, and I don't know what. And a Frankenstein serving you the coffee. That's not success. That's not bracha. Bracha is something different. You know what bracha, what's the, 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 the root of the word bracha? Bet, resh, chaf. Levarech, right? Maza levarech. What is called, what, which part of our body has the same, the same root? Berech, your knee. Livroch is to bend. When you bend down, when you don't hold yourself up like this, when you kneel down and you pray to God on your knees, when you lower yourself down, in other words, not to, to be like no self-esteem, you lower yourself down, you know, you don't hold so much, you understand who you are right now. Right now you're a person. When you borechet atzmecha, when you bend yourself, when you go down on your knees, then you're going to have bracha. Bracha is not what you think. That's why people give you bracha. You don't get it. You get upset. You, you do get it. You just don't realize that. The biggest blessing is that you get another chance. That you get another life. You get another day. Every day is a, is a, is a bracha for you. You just got another day. You get another chance to do the right thing. Every day you get another chance to do the right thing. You get 24 hours of another chance to do the right thing. You think about it. What have you done today to reward you the next day? Why should I give you a bracha if I was God? Why should I? You hold yourself high. I say it's not a problem. Am Israel failed to acknowledge that Bet HaMikdash was destroyed, was taken for us. We are too arrogant. Ah, who am I to do this? That's a you know. And Baruch took us. And when Bet HaMikdash was destroyed, came the Shekhinah, supposed to go to Galut. And the Shekhinah came and looked all over the place where the Kohanim used to be, where the Levim used to be. And the Shekhinah was crying. Since the Shekhinah was crying, how could we laugh? How could we rejoice? How could we go to clubs? How could we go to parties? When we have a bar mitzvah, instead of understanding and explaining the child that right now he became a man, it's an initiation ceremony. When we call the kid to go to the Torah, to put his tefillin on, it's an initiation ceremony. If you understand the magnitude of that, you would not have belly dancers at your bar mitzvah. Regardless of how much money you have. It's not a, a, a uh, I don't know, the sultan's sons getting, in, getting uh, whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's a tremendous thing. Now you're officially becoming a troop. A, 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 a part of us. Until now, your opinion did not count. However, we as parents don't want to acknowledge this kid as, as an adult. And we keep on treating him like a child. No wonder he would fail. Because it, when it's your turn to go to the front line and you don't know how to use the gun, not only you're not going to make it, you're, you're becoming a danger to somebody else. So the more trained of a soldier you are, the bigger asset you are to all of us. And as that, we need to be the best Jews that we could be. The most knowledgeable, knowledgeable Jews that we could be. And if we are not knowledgeable Jews, and we don't live appropriately and according to the, to the spirit of the Torah, we're becoming a danger to the other Jews around us. We're like a fifth column. And it's something for us to remember. And Am Israel will be able, the Zohar says, Am Israel is in Galut. 
לשכינה סרט ולא אהבו בדרכיו הלוך ולא שמעו בתורתו. They, the reason why we went to Galut is because we didn't follow his path, הקדוש ברוך הוא זה, בדרכיו. The path of Torah. Torah is a way of life. You cannot be a Jew inside and a Goy outside. That was the disease of American Jewry, which came from Germany. I'm a German at home. I mean, no, I'm a Jew at home, a German outside. I eat kosher at home, but outside I eat, oh, no, oh, I eat this. You know, I, but my house is kosher. It's like a man that will come and tell his wife, honey, at home I'm 100% loyal to you. Outside, you know, whatever happens, happens. What can I do? It's work related. You know how pathetic this argument is? They did not. Guys, you have to be a Jew across the board. In other words, if you're going to a job interview, you have to wear your kippah on your head. Don't take your kippah off because you're a Jew and you're afraid. You know, what do you think? What are you going to do when it's Yom Kippur? You're not going to take off? What are you afraid? Are you embarrassed of being a Jew? Why don't you wear it as a badge of honor? Why aren't we proud to be Jews? Why when you, when you're going to do something like this, go to a job interview, why do you feel you need to take the kippah off? If you are not going to get the job because you're a Jew, guess what? You shouldn't work it to begin with. As if it's that simple. If a Muslim woman can wear a hijab on her head, if a Sikh can wear the shmata on his head, he has this turban on his head, if anybody can do whatever they want, why can't you? It's not because they look at you, because you can't look at yourself. A Torah is a way of life, and you need to live as a Jew. When you don't live your life as a Jew, you are at that moment not, not a practicing Jew. That's why you need to dress like a Jew and act like one. I don't, okay, I'm not saying grow your peot like, like tails and wear your three quarters. Uh, you know, we're not, we don't live in the Wild West. I'm going to wear a frock and uh, like this. Don't take your socks out of your, out of your pants. I'm not saying work like a chassid. But there's a certain thing that would recognize you as a Jew. Okay, if we are in a place of danger, I don't know, you're going to France and uh, you're going to Paris now, or you're going to Turkey and you're going to wear this, you're going to get beaten up and maybe probably even lynched. Okay, guess what? Don't go there. Why do Israelis have to go to Turkey? For what? To eat and drink because there's a lot of food and everything is included? Guess what? Beating up is included also. Why do you don't have self-respect? Why do you need to go there? Hey, French people, Frenchies, frog eaters, you know, you don't take care of the, of the well-being of my people. We are not the same citizens. Guess what? I'm not going there. And I'm not going to buy French food or French wine or French anything. Tag with you. That's the way it works. But you take the beating, say, okay, so because we're Jews. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to hide the fact that you're Jew. They're going to find you. Am Israel does not want to walk in, in Derech Hashem. Derech Hashem is, listen, Gentiles are Gentiles, I'm not saying they're bad people, not, you know, they're people. We just have to be different, separated. Why? Because that's what God wanted. That's not good enough for you. Separate. Why do you have to be like them? I mean, there, there are so many Gentiles in the world, you don't know which one to pick. So where, where are you going to aim it? Maybe, maybe you should be Chinese or maybe be, be Japanese. My ish. Why do I have to look like a hip star, a hipster, or, or a hip hop singer? Why can't I just look like a Jew? Why do I have to have dreadlocks? And... And the Shekhinah says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, where would I go? Now the Shekhinah is in Galut also. When Am Yisrael went, the Gemara says, the Shekhinah went with it together. It's in Galut, in exile. Only a remnant of the total capacity of, of the Shekhinah stayed, and it stayed on the Kotel Maravi, on the Western Wall. Where would I go, the Shekhinah says. 
that for a certain point, like Hashem Baruch Hu says, let me first not bring the Shekhinah home. Let me first gather the Jews. Then we're going to build a house. Then the Shekhinah is going to come back. The gathering of the Jews is very simple. If you bothered all your time to acknowledge the fact that you were a Jew, you lived as a Jew, you didn't run away from that. You wear your kippah, you make sure that you're a Jew and you did not compromise on your Jewish values. You wear your tzitzit, you wear your kippah. As far as I'm concerned, go, go learn karate, that's fine too. But that you gotta do. When you do karate, do it with your tzitzit also and your kippah also. And don't tell me you can't. You wanna be re redeemed as a Jew? This is not a problem. Make sure that you have your Jewish ID. Now, all of a sudden, when things will happen, and Akadosh Baruch says, okay, gather my children, whoever, wherever you roam, right? Because the time they are changing, now it's time to go back home. All of a sudden, everybody, ah, I'm a Jew too. Excuse me. It doesn't work like this. Let me show you one second a video of you. You weren't a Jew all this time. So what do you think you're going to make it? You want to make it? Start doing like this. You want to build, a, you want to show HaKadosh Baruch Hu that you are worthy of getting the permission to go back to the land and build the Mishka, Bet HaMikdash? That's not a problem. It's very simple. Start building the Bet HaMikdash inside of you. And the only Simcha that the person has Ki en la kadosh baruch hu ela simcha, the simcha of the Torah. That's the only time we have very few smachot we have. We have simchat a Torah. We have simchat chatan vekala, which are very significant. And the connection between simchat Torah and simchat chatan vekala are quite obvious without me even expanding on it. That's the only time you should rejoice, and not when your team makes the playoff. Or wins the Stanley Cup, or wins the whatever they win, Mundial, I don't know, whatever it is. That's your team. And the Torah is your badge of honor. And your way is the only way that you should have, the Jewish way of life. You have a special diet to keep, you have a special manual that you have to live by, and that's what you have to do. You want to get a ticket, you want to get a ticket. Back home, it's not a problem. Earn it. Shabbat shalom.